Hello, thank you for coming in today for the interview for a correctional officer. My name is John Wise. To the left of me is Mary. To the right of me is Mike. This interview will take about 30 minutes, maybe longer, depending, of course. I want to tell you that this uh, interview is not designed to trip you up, to make it impossible for you to answer the questions. It's really to see if you are really a fit for a correctional officer in our facility. Without further ado, we're going to get started right now, okay? Why do you want to work as a correctional officer? Uh huh. Okay. Okay. How would you handle the aggression and confrontation you are likely to face at this kind of job? Yes. Okay. Okay. Can you handle yourself physically when called upon to do so? Okay. How do you describe the typical day for a corrections officer? Hmm, okay. How do you handle the stress from being a correctional officer? Or what do you think you will handle the stress if you are hired as a correctional officer? How will you deal with that? Okay. As you know, in this position, you have to be aware of your surroundings at all times. So tell me about a time you were able to use your observational skills to resolve a problem or even to pre uh, prevent a problem. Correct. Prevent a problem. Yes. Okay. So one of your key jobs as a correctional officer is to keep the peace amongst the inmates, right, who are having issues. Tell me about a time you successfully use conflict resolution skills. Okay. Okay. Tell me how you will maintain professional boundaries uh, between inmates. Say they wanted to start to become your friend or start to ask you for favors. How do you maintain those boundaries? Yes. Okay. How would you respond if you saw another colleague, a correctional officer, intimidating or even abusing an inmate? Okay. Tell me the steps you would take if an inmate disobeyed a direct order. A direct order, yes. Okay. As you know, about one quarter of inmates come in there with mental issues. Do you have any prior experience with people who have had mental uh, mental issues, mental illness? Mm -hmm. So give me from one through 10, 10 being the worst, one being the, the least. How would you rate your ability to stay calm when being provoked? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, what strategies do you know about to keep the facilities secure? Okay. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, that's, that's good, thank you. What is the appropriate protocol for reporting and documenting uh, inappropriate behavior of inmates? Okay. Sometimes during the course of this job, you may witness crimes within the jail, within the prison. Um, how do you how do you handle your emotions when you see these kind of things happen? Uh huh. And what would you notice if you what would you do if you notice supplies are missing from, say, an inmate workstation, the mechanic area? What would you do? Okay, thank you. At this point here, I wanna ask you, do you have any questions for us? Thank you. Okay guys, I'm John Wise Jones. Let's review these uh, uh, these questions and some answers. I don't have every answer because some of them will have to come from your personal experience. Excuse me, I'm John Wise Jones. This is my channel, thank you and welcome here. I mostly focus on interview success for people. Been doing this over 15 years. I don't do long introductions. I'm not here to waste your time. That's not fair to you. So 
let's get right into it, okay? So the thing with this interview process is that some of the answers I'm not going to have, but I'm going to lead you down the right road to answer those questions perfectly, okay? <laughs> or near as perfect as we can get. First question was, why do you want to work as a correctional facilities officer? So what they're really asking for, they're looking at your philosophy, how you think about things, right? How you treat people. Do you see all people as they deserve a little bit of respect, a little bit of dignity, you know, a little bit of, you know, you're a human being, you may have made a mistake, you know, are you the kind of person that believes in justice, you know, maybe some honor, some self-respect, uh, empathy, things of that nature. So in, 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 your, in your answer, you know, I'm someone who believes in everybody should have the respect that they're, 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 they're due, you know, I believe in helping out people who've made mistakes. I think that everybody makes mistakes and everybody can come back from a mistake. An answer like that, right? Because you're dealing with people, so your answer should be people oriented. Understand? That makes sense, right? Okay. So the next question was, how would you handle the aggression and confrontation you are likely to face at this job? Now, this is a big question because it's going to deal with your with your temperament, right? How you handle things, you know. And so, the, 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 what they're looking for the interview panel is in your answer. They're looking for the ability for you to calm head, right? Calm heads are always the best, right? A calm, cool head always takes care of everything because that person is one you will look for, look toward to. If you have a CEO who's going crazy, eh, you know, that's not the one that's going to gain that respect and understanding for the inmates. Therefore, in your answer, you want to say you are, you're the kind of person who's always calm, even in adverse situations. If things are out of your control, you know how to seek help from other CEOs who are there um, and things of that nature. So you want to always make sure that you are the calm, cool head <clears throat> in, in these situations. Sometimes you can just say, you know, I, I've always treated people well. You know, it's just how I do. It's, 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 it's my belief. Uh, when things are out of control or are getting out of control, I always remain a calm and cool head because people look for people who are calm and cool in dire situations. I'm always that person that people look for because that's the kind of personality that I have. <clears throat> and last, you want to say, if, and if, if things are out of, out of my control, I know how to ask for help as well. That's the answer like that, right? You want to keep it focused, uh, calm, and also know how to report up or get help from your other colleagues if you need it. Number three, can you handle yourself physically if called upon to do so? Well, you know, part of this job is this, right? So you don't have to say they, 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 you have a, they, they you have a, a black belt, <laughs> no. But you do want to let them know that, see, part of a confrontation is how confident you are, right? If you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody, you can tell from their facial expressions how confident they really are in the fight, right? So you can say, I always have a confident nature. It's just how I am. People always saw me as one who tends to break up fights. You know, I never get engaged in fights, but I tend to break up fights. And people know that I'm always trying to be fair to both sides. I'm, I'm a good listener. I can apply these same, uh, these same tactics into this job as a correctional officer, as I believe it's a good fit. You see, something like that, you guys, you know, you want to show confidence. You want to talk about how confident, how, how confident you are. You know, those things count when it comes down to this interview. They're looking for that. OK, so that's how you do that. No, next one was, uh, how would you describe a typical workday of a correctional officer? Well, the first thing you want to be on time. Don't be one of these people who are late all the time. That's, that's not going to be cool. So you're punctual. You understand routine that you know how to handle stress. That's a lot of the job, really. Right. Because not just be on time when it comes to the job, but be on time in your rounds and things of that nature, right? You know how to be, uh, you, you understand, you like routines, that, 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 that's your thing, you know. <clears throat> You're very punctual. Um, you also know how to, how to know that things sometimes might not go as according to plan, but you know how to adjust and be flexible to things that don't go according to plan. Because yeah, you wanna be punctual and, and go by timelines, but you also gotta be someone who's what? Flexible, correct? You gotta be a flexible person, right? So how would you handle the stress of being a CEO? Well, you know, <clears throat> stress, the best way to relieve stress is to do something that's not related to CEO work, right? So 
how do I handle stress? Oh yes, I you know I understand this job is going to be very stressful, and I totally understand that. But I have a lot of hobbies and things that I do on my own. I like to build trains at home. I like to go on walks with my dog. I really get in, in, into kayaking and canoeing. Those are my things. You know, I like to read to keep up to date on, on on correctional officer information. You know, law enforcement information. But yeah, mostly though, I like to build my boats at home and do things like that. See, your answer. You want to make sure your answer is mostly separated from the job, right? Because they're looking for in you a work-life balance, right? If you say, "Oh, I go home and I and I practice at the gun range and I practice my self-defense and, and I think about how to be a better CEO all the time," that's no work-life balance. That's like a grenade waiting, waiting to explode because you're not showing any way that you really you relax yourself from your job. You have to separate the job from your life via having a life, understand? Your, your job is your career, I get that, that's fine. For the eight, 10 hours or more you're there, whatever, four days a week, whatever you work, the, the time you're off, they're looking in your answer that you are actually off work. You're not still stuck at work in your mind, understand? That leads to burnout, high divorce rates, high alcohol use, high drug use. You don't want to be involved in none of that. You wanna make sure that you separate in your answer, you show them that you separate your professional life from your off life, okay? That's important, okay? There we go. Next one was uh, working as an officer requires a constant awareness. Tell me about a time you use your observational awareness. Now, this is a question that I cannot answer for you, you know, but one thing you can say though is that I am always aware of, of wherever I go uh, when I leave my house. Typically, when I go to a restaurant, I sit with my back against the wall. I like to look around and see things are okay. When I park my car at night, I like to make sure there's not other people in their cars, you know, or people who might look suspicious, things of that nature, right? When you go, when you go, when you walk down the street, you know, you make sure that, you know, things around you are looking normal. You know, tell them things like that where they're, they're instantly aware that you, you are involved in your environment and, and you are looking around, you're part of the environment and you're scanning sometimes, not overly, not, not, so, not overly suspicious, but you're scanning. Tell them you're always scanning the environment for safety in the environment. And that makes sense because many people today, myself included, we, we do this all the time for our safety of ourselves and also for our family. Tell me about a time you use conflict resolution skills. Now, if you guys have never had a SEAL job before, that's okay. Take something from your past and how you use it in the, you know, for this interview, right? Any job, if you are, I worked at Sears for, for two years and in that time, I've had a few customers who get upset, you know, at me or maybe another person. What I realized in my time is that people who are upset want to be heard. So I always listen to them first. They, they want to be heard, right? And I always show them respect when they listen to what they're saying. Then I offer a solution to the problem once they're done talking. So. Typically, that works out well in, in, my, in, in my favor as far as resolving the problem. And then everybody seems like we, we, we got the problem solved. So, guys, in your answer, you don't have to have this 10-year CEO experience. You can abstract. You can take anything from any, any part of your life before where there's been some conflict and use it as part of the interview. Even if you worked at McDonald's or you flipped burgers before you became a CEO. Believe me, there's a lot of people these days who get mad about the wrong size French fries. <laughs> So you can use that too, right? Use anything you want to use for conflict resolution. Believe me, it'll be good. As long as you show that you can do conflict resolution, right? Uh, how would you maintain professional boundaries if an inmate starts to befriend you or ask you for favors? When you're CEO, you don't mix words. There's no gray area. You're going to tell the panel that I will tell them respectfully, but strongly. We cannot, we, we can't not be friends here and I cannot do favors for you in a story. You don't have to go on and explain to the panel how you do that. Short and cut to the point. That's all you gotta do. I have, I have a military background, I've never been a CEO, but I know when things must be said, they must be said. So that's how you wanna do that. Straight into the point, respectfully. That's all you gotta do, okay? How would you respond if you saw another SEAL uh, abusing or harassing an inmate? You would definitely have to, that's not good at all, right? So what, what would you do with that? Mm -hmm. You will want to go talk to your supervisor about that so they can take care of that. That's not going to be in your scope to say, hey, buddy, uh, what? no. You report that because those things can cause problems for you. Inmates don't always see the enemy as a different person. They might see the enemy as the same person wearing the same uniform, right? And that's going to catch you up in, in, in the, um, the other, other CEO's nonsense, right? 
because they just might see the uniform and think you guys are all acting this way, think you guys are all abusing the, uh, the, the, the inmates, you know? That goes right to your supervisor. You tell the interview panel that because it shows you know how to handle something serious. That's serious, that's beyond your scope and beyond your pay grade. You tell the panel, I go right to my supervisor and let them know what's happening so they can take care of it. That's all you gotta do. <clears throat> what steps would you take if an inmate disobeyed a direct order? You would, <clears throat> what would you do? I want you to make sure you read that from your state, right? Read the regs and the reg regulations and know the answer before you get in there because I don't know that answer. That's something you have to research on your own and bring it with you to the interview, okay? But they will ask that question because CEOs and police officers and people of authority these days are getting challenged more and more for the most simplistic of, of basic rules, you know? So make sure you know what your state, if that penitentiary has somehow the rules for you to look at, make sure you have that information and make sure you're ready to answer that question because it will come your way, all right? Good job. Uh, if many inmates have mental issues, do you have an experience working with people with mental illness? Okay. Even if you don't have experience working with people with mental illness, you want to use patience because here's the deal. You can say, first thing you say, no, I don't have any direct uh, experience working with people with mental illness, but I'm, I'm a very patient person. I understand that people have issues and people have, have all sorts of, of things in their way to make them become, to be functional people in this life. But I'm a very patient person. I like to help people overcome these obstacles when it comes to uh, mental illness amongst the, the prisoners. I will show them the same respect I show anybody else. When you answer a question like that, guys, yes, you're confessing you don't have the mental illness experience, but you do have the patience there that you need to be equipped with because uh, like mental people, people with mental illnesses, like everybody else needs what? They need patience. That's all you gotta say. They want to know that you're a patient person, that you're not going to sit there and get irate on this person because they're mentally ill. They want to make sure you are balanced in your brain to handle a person who's not balanced in their brain, okay? That's how you answer that question, all right? Um, how would you rate your ability to stay calm when provoked? You have to be honest here. I don't have an answer for you here. It has to come out of your true experience, your true persona, right? If 10 were the worst and one was the was the most the easiest to deal with being provoked, right? You know, I'm about a I'm about a, an eight. I, I, you know, I'm good at being provoked. It's not really a big issue because of my of my life background. You know, um, not my ethnicity, but my life background, what I've been exposed to in my life. So I have a, I have a very high tolerance for nonsense. You know, and some people don't. And if you don't, you really need to make sure you are ready for this kind of job. You know, you got to be honest with yourself, right? If, if you are, it's fine. If you're not, make sure you're honest with yourself before you go in front of an interview panel, you know, and, and maybe you're not the person that you think you are because you're not being honest with yourself. So make sure you're honest with yourself, okay? That's all I'm saying, all right? Um, discuss the strategies you would use to ensure different areas of the facility were secure. Every facility in every state has their own uh, has their own protocol in place, right? You got to do your homework a little bit, right? And figure out what that is, you know, what they require or what most facilities require. I don't have that answer for you, but it's going to come your way at the interview process. So this is why I do this. I want you guys to be prepared for this stuff, you know? I do this a lot. If you guys ever want me to talk to you guys via Google or, um, or Zoom, to give you guys some interview tips, even interview your, your school, your class or whatever, just let me know through uh, through uh, jobwisejones at gmail.com. We can set something up. It's no big deal. I am booked for April. I just did a talk this morning, so this, this I'm, I'm booked for April. But um, please reach out, and I will help your your colleagues. You know, get ready for their interviews because this is how it's going to be. You know, they're going to come at you directly, and when they're going to want some answers from you, and not just yes and no's. They're going to want to have these comprehensive type answers to really get a feel for who you are. Okay, all right, guys. So, what is the appropriate protocol for reporting and documenting suspicious behavior from inmates? Again, that's going to come from you after you do your research with the with the prison or jail facility you wish to work in. Okay, um, correctional officers may witness a crime or violence. Are you able to regulate your emotions to do your job effectively? You should say yes if that's true. Yes. Yes, I could definitely regulate my emotions. I kind of see it in this in this environment, kind of like part of the, part of the environment. I already know these things might happen, and so I am already prepared. And by being prepared, it means I'm going to approach it with patience and justice, and be fair to everybody involved. That's how I plan on doing that for this job. 
Okay, you guys, see that answer? Again, you, you're talking about being patient, right? But you're also talking about being fair and just, right? You might hear things, but you're gonna help figure out what the real cause, the real action here was, and what really happened. The only way you can do that is through patience. You cannot do it if you're a hothead looking for a quick answer. It's not gonna happen that way. You have to be patient, right? And then what? Just, you wanna do everybody involved some justice, of course, right? So there we go, all right? And so, and what would you do if you notice missing supplies from an inmate work site? Well, that's going to be up to the facility that you're at. You have to look at their investigative processes and how those things work. I don't know the answer because you imagine how many prisons there are in America. I'm sure each one has some slight protocol deviations. So you must look at those deviations and see what applies to where. Bring that knowledge with you to the interview, okay? Last question they ask you, do you have any questions for us? All job-wise Jones subscribers know what the answer is. The answer is yes, and here's a question I always want you to ask. This is called job-wise Jones power transference. You're gonna ask anybody on the panel, one person, you say yes. This sounds like a really good place to work. Can you tell me why you like coming here to work? What that question does, it lets the interview panel know immediately that this is now a two-way street. An interview, you guys, is a two-way street, not a one-way street. They're interviewing you to see if you're going to fit there, but you're also interviewing them to see if you are going to fit there, correct? So you ask that question, you're the interviewee, they're the interviewer. It changes it. Now you become the interviewer and somebody on that panel becomes the interviewee because you're asking an intelligent, articulate, and inquisitive question about what is so great about work, working there, right? That's a good question, guys. You also want to ask a couple other questions, too, but make sure you always ask that question, why do you like working here, all right? Hey, you guys, I'm here to help you, all right? My name is Jobwise Jones at jobwisejones at gmail.com. Please subscribe to this channel. I do these things all by myself, so a little support would be nice. If you like the video, please hit like. I really appreciate it, guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.